Hi everybody, I'm live. I forgot to post about it, so hopefully you can all go out and post about it and tell your friends um, that I'm here live from BookCon in New York, and I am looking forward to answering all of your questions. So you can start firing away. In the meantime, um, if you've never heard of the Squigger Walkers, these are my books. Um, they are early reader books. They're ideally designed for kids somewhere between 6 and 10, but I'm always saying between 6 and 60 is kind of the range, maybe even 100. I like the books. I'm an adult. They're um, illustrated books about a group of vice-ridden, naughty marionette puppets who all have flaws, the same way we all have flaws. And the books are cautionary tales for modern day brats, for um, kids nowadays who are so used to being coddled and told it's not your fault and you know things that go wrong. It's you know it's it's if it's unfair then it shouldn't be unfair. Um, it's a healthy reminder of the cautionary tales that I was raised on, that our parents and grandparents were raised on, that remind kids what you do has consequences and your choices matter. And so it's important the choices that you make. Um, I'm ready to take questions. If anyone has any that they want to share with me, throw them out there. I haven't seen one yet. I don't. I can't see my feed. Somebody else is feeding me. Um, who wrote these stories that were highly illustrated and they had a very small amount of words per page, but they were always really dark and naughty and sophisticated and they kind of had this sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge nature to them that said, I know you're smart just because you're not a good reader doesn't mean you're dumb. And I love those books and I fell in love with that author and um, was inspired to do the same for other kids if I could. What else? Rochelle, Rochelle asks, did you read Harry Potter? Um, I did not read Harry Potter and I'm going to have a lot of people mad at me for saying so, but I tried. I picked, I picked up the first book and I tried to read it. I was a full-blown adult. And I felt like it was just not on my level. It wasn't what I was looking for in a book. And I know other adults that love them, but I felt like, man, I might have liked this when I was 10 or 12, but I, didn't, I couldn't get into it. Keep it a secret. Don't tell anyone. People will hate me for that answer. Um, how did I meet the illustrator of The Demise of Selma the Spoiled? This is a crazy story, a good story to be telling on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I met Rodrigo Bastos Didier on Facebook. He had read the, um, the pre-show, the original Squicker Walkers book, the pre-show, that's illustrated by Johnny Fraser Allard, who I met at the Weta Workshop, um, which is Peter Jackson's creative arm in New Zealand. And he loved it, and he loved the art in it, and was so inspired by the art in it, he made some Squicker Walkers fan art. And he said, never thought anything of it, never thought in a million years I would ever meet the guy, or that we would end up working together on what is now the demise of Sound of the Spoil, which is act one of the Squicker Walkers. Um, but it turned out that um, I ended up making a second book for the series. I needed an illustrator. And I was in Brazil at a Brazil Comic Con, and he crashed my party. And he came in, and he had this amazing sketchbook, and he had, he had um, amazing prints of the artwork, the fan art he had sent me, and he made a real pitch for the job. And I initially didn't think he was a right, the right fit for the books because he his art was really mature, it was really adult, it was really sophisticated, and um, I was looking for something a lot younger. But he adapted his style, and we worked together for six months trying to get it right, and eventually, after six months, I told him it still wasn't right. But eight months, Eight months, two months later, after eight months, we did end up deciding that uh, it was a perfect fit. And Rodrigo has now illustrated the gorgeous, incredible, breathtaking illustrations in The Demise of Some of the Spoil. I'm going to give you an example of one of my favorite pages. I think it's just absolutely stunning. Look at that. I have four cameras going. Sorry, guys. I'm not really looking at you half the time. I'm looking at them, and I'm looking at them, and I'm looking at them. Um, but, yeah. The rest is history. Hopefully, Rodrigo will be doing all the remaining 18 books of the Squidward Walker series. Um, what else? How do you keep modern day kids who are so used to multimedia entertainment in game, the amount of kids who still love proper old school paper books? Um, but I'm aware of the fact that they, that 
kids nowadays often want a kind of multimedia immersive experience. And I, coming from a film background, love that as well. So I've created audiobooks that are a great accompaniment, a very cheap accompaniment to the hard copy books for $3.95, I think, on Audible or Amazon or iTunes. You can get the audiobooks to accompany any of the Squicker Wonker hard copy books. And they have a full soundtrack and sound effects and voices and really immerse you in the kind of visual world that you're looking at. Um, so that's one of the tools that, that I've decided to use as a, as a way of keeping kids' attention. All right, last question. I'm running out of time. Somebody else needs to come in this gorgeous room overlooking BookCon in New York and use it. When did you decide to start writing? Did your family inspire you to go through with it? Um, I decided to start writing when I was 12, and I went to Disneyland for spring break, and my teacher gave me an assignment. She said you ha I had to keep a journal while I was gone, and that that journal had to be every single day. And I had never really been much of a writer up to then. I'd written like little stories at the school, and actually I got, I've had one of my poems published I should, in the third grade. I kind of forgot about that. Maybe that's the beginning. It was called My Little Sugar Bowl. <laughs> and it was about sugar. I'm still a sugar addict. Um, but that was my first parlay into publishing. It was a big deal. I was published in the school newspaper. And then I just wrote and wrote and wrote and journaled and journaled and journaled. I just couldn't get enough of it once I started. And I wrote a story called The Squicker Wonkers when I was 14. And my mom said, that's pretty darn good. You should try and publish that. And of course, I was 14. And I thought, my mom thinks everything I do is good. That probably means it's utter crap. I should never show it to anyone else. Um, cut to... I was working with Peter Jackson on The Hobbit, and I was at the Wedding Workshop, and I was so inspired by the works that the artists were doing there. Most of them were publishing their own work or creating their own things, and I thought, I really want to do that. So I engaged, and he read the manuscript of three of my children's stories, and because for the past 20 years, my mother had urged me over and over and over and over to publish The Squicker Walkers, the manuscript for that that I wrote when I was 14 was in the package I sent him, and Johnny chose that one. He said he had a lot of ideas of how he wanted to bring that story to life through marionette puppets on a wagon instead of human beings on a road, and, and I was just delighted. I just loved the idea. I thought it was so delicious and kind of brought a darker tone to the story than I had even already laced into it when I was a brooding 14-year-old. Um, and, and that was sort of it. But if it wasn't for my mom telling me at 14 and then again at 15 and 16 and 17 and 18 and onward, you should really publish The Squicker Walkers. I don't know if I would have ever done it. So thanks, Mom. I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I'll have to do a longer one another time, but it was fun to do it while I was here in this amazing place with all of these bibliophiles who came here because they love books and I love books. Hi! Hi, <laughs> people are waving. Yay! Um, thanks for showing up. Thanks, guys.